shocked. Yeah. And they're like, what the fuck? Honestly, what was the reaction of those kids like? That fucking group of five or six kids in Super Value. Yeah. Are you fucking, are you fucking all you hear, and, and this, and this, it's, it's all you hear is like, when I know we fucking joke about it when we hear like Irish curse. Every single yeah. one of them said, what there's, the fuck, man? Someone, someone what else. the fuck? Fuck, fuck. And you just sat there going, <laughs> hey, Gary. what's up, bro? You good? <laughs> yeah, what? Do you know what I find about a lot of Irish is they notice me mm. and they don't say anything. Really? They just no, give you a space? It, it, and, or, or someone will come up and go like, congrats on the success. Yeah, and just walk yeah, yeah. away. And I'm like, oh, wow. Well. Because like, I thought it was going to be a bit fucking... And the amount of people I've seen clock me and not say anything, it would be nuts if yeah. I was stopping. Because it only takes one to take a photo, then 14 people take a photo, and then 15, and then it's, you walk someone else. Yeah. And it's just, it's constant. Whereas like, I just got a load of people like, want to, you know, and they walk, yeah. just walk away. And it's been fucking really, really yeah. cool. Welcome back to the channel. You are watching Severe MMA. My name is Andy Stevenson, and I am delighted to say today I am joined by the man who I believe will be headlining this very arena in 2024. The man who, after a dominant display against Neil Magny, many are tipping to be Ireland's next UFC champion, Ian Machado Gary. Welcome home. How are we? It's good to be back. How are, you, how are you doing? How are you enjoying your time in Ireland? <laughs> it's good. It's good to be back. Soak up the kind of the vibes of the Irish and just to come back and enjoy a little, a little bit of celebration with some people. It's really, really nice. Absolutely. You, I know you were, you've been taking in the arena here over the last number of days. What goes through your mind? What, what, what visualize, visualization goes on when you're, you're looking at this arena? Just causing absolute chaos. Just having the most amount of people that can fit into that stadium, causing a bit of pandemonium, bringing a, a main event back to Dublin that is going to be one for the ages, one to remember, and one to excite the Irish MMA media and the fan base, and just relight that fucking fire that we need in Irish MMA, because it's there. It's, it's quite clearly there, but it's just, we need that spark. Dana White told Dunna Corby in the UFC 292 post-fight presser that he has guaranteed you. He said there was a handshake. Do there you was, remember that interaction? There was a fucking handshake. We've got it on camera. <laughs> there was a handshake and a deal made that when I go out there and do something that we agreed, that he will bring me back to, to Dublin. Yeah. You know, I, I spent a lot of time living abroad and I found that when I came home, it felt different. It felt special. Does it feel that way to you when you come home? Do you know what? It's, it's not that it feels special, it feels different. It feels obviously amazing to come back to your roots and be where you are, but it also excites me to go forward and see where I came from and to see what I've done in that space of time and to excite me to want to do even more. So it's come back, all right, this is where I was born, I was bred, this is what I know. I know these streets like the back of my fucking hand, but now it's time to just go create more, go create a legacy, go do something different and, and enjoy it. I know you were chatting with, with Pete Carroll on the Crack Podcast and you were saying that you wanted to go to Port Marnock Beach, just mm -hmm. take a little bit of time and reflect. Have you had the opportunity to do that yet? No, we've been busy. I drove by it. I went and seen my family, which obviously we live very close to Port Marnock Beach. But no, I want to go back there with time to just sit down and just look at the coastline. Maybe I'll do it in Hope because I find Hope more beautiful. But just sit down and be like, fuck. Yeah, Ireland's very beautiful. It's very different to a lot of places on Earth. And it's obviously somewhere that's very dear to my heart. And yeah, it's good to be back. It's, it's, it's not surprising, but it is crazy how far you come. I remember your last fight in Ireland was in Cork. Yeah. You got an amazing reception <laughs> that night. Yeah. Uh, obviously got a, a big win against Figlak uh, on that night, but you were 21 years old then. I know it's been four years, but four years is still not a lot of time. You've gone on, you've won the Cage Warriors title, you've gone to the UFC, but not only that, you, you're married, you have a child, yeah. you're signing business deals with Jake Paul. Yeah. Does it feel like it's a whirlwind to you? No, it feels like it's absolutely how it should be. I said this from day one to everybody that when, everybody that talked to me when I joined MMA. I was the new generation of Irish fighters. I'm the new generation of fighters that are going to inevitably be in the UFC. And obviously having that inspiration from Connor drove me. But I'm here to do, I'm here to do my own career. I'm here to show the world what Ian Machado Gary can do to the world, what he can do for MMA, and how I can do it very differently. And it's it's time to write my own history and I'm excited by it and I told everybody what was going to happen and it's just all come to fruition. It's interesting that you say that particularly because um, there's obviously the comparisons to Connor and look, you, sometimes you, you maybe borrow a quote here or there. Always. But I know you're a big Jordan fan. I don't know if you've seen the movie Coach Carter but there is yes, a... Have. You have? Yeah, yeah. There is a character in it uh, called Ty Crane. Mm. plays for St. Francis. And the reporter asks him, you know, what's it like? You're going to be the next LeBron James. And he goes, LeBron James, I'm the only Ty Crane. And that's what I think of. <laughs> I think of like, you know, Conor McGregor, yeah, but I, I'm the only in Gary. Mm -hmm. Is that how you kind of approach this? Look, it's inevitable that Conor's going to have 
inspiration, my career. Look at where we look at where we grew up. Look at the you guys are aware the fucking pan, the, the mayhem that that man caused in Irish. Just it feels like that man's part of the fucking religion of the country now. Like he's a he's, a, he's someone people are going to look up to and and draw inspiration from for years to come because what he did was sensational and the way he did it and the way he took over the UFC. And the pandemonium that he caused in Vegas and with the fans and just the excitement and the build of the fights was different to anyone we've ever seen. He changed the game forever. And as a young kid who's excited by what he did, absolutely there's going to be comparisons. But also I'm from Dublin, Ireland. I have that same fucking attitude that mm. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to get what I want because I can. I have the fucking lip. Of course we're going to have similarities, but we're two very different people with a similar goal. And if you put two very similar people with a, with a similar goal to be that fucking elite and that great, of course they're gonna draw comparisons. And of course we're gonna have similarities. But you're comparing me to the guy who changed the sport. I will take that moment every single day of the week. Are there specific aspects that when you look back in your career, you, you wanna say, I did things little ways maybe differently or, or uniquely as, as Ian Gary, as Ian Machado Gary? I just wanna do things my way and have fun and enjoy it. That's, that's part of the process. If I'm not having fun, then why am I doing it? So every camp, every fight, everything we do is designed around having fun and enjoying the process. Because if I'm not enjoying this and it feels like work, then stop and go do something else. One of the things that I think has worked incredibly well, as is evident from your results, is this nomadic lifestyle, right? Yeah. I was going to ask you, I was going to come into this interview and ask you, you know, the challenges of, of connecting with the Irish space while training abroad. But then I look around... And every two <laughs> seconds before this interview started, you're being mobbed by yeah. people. But like, do you, is that like is that in your mind? Are you consciously thinking, right? How can I still maintain that connection with home while while being away? No, because I feel like from my roots and from where I've grown up and what everything that I've done to get to where I am, I'm still fucking Irish. When I fight, I'm carrying the flag for the Irish, whether I'm allowed to carry a flag in or not. I'm still Irish, and what I'm doing is building Irish MMA and. Any MMA fighter that's, that has a will or a want to aspire to be the best in the world, they just have to see that I'm doing it and go, well, Ian Gary's doing it, why can't I do it? Just the same exact way that I looked at Conor, like, Conor's doing it, why can't I? I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do anything any special way except my way. And if people can draw inspiration because I'm Irish, then great. But if, if someone in England or someone in anywhere in Europe or Brazil or America can draw inspiration from me going in there competing, then fucking take it and run with it. It doesn't have to be because my roots are Irish, but absolutely, I would love the people of Ireland, and you've seen it, yeah. everyone's behind me, and that's what I want. I just want people to know that I'm going in there and having fun and doing what I love. You spoke with Sean Sheen ahead of Cage Warriors Cork back in 2019. <laughs> you said yeah. you were going to become the Cage Warriors champion, you'd go on to the UFC, and you'd bring the UFC back to Dublin now. Yes, sir. Well, maybe we'll talk about the, 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 the potential Dublin event, the inevitable Dublin yeah. event, inevitable. in a little bit, but... You're within touching distance now, right? That, like, we're, we're here outside the three arena. You are within touching distance. One more fight. That's how you see it. It is happening. I said it. It's happening. Obviously, I would have loved to have done it the, by the end of this year, but with the schedule and everything the UFC have planned, it's just not possible. But 100%, I get another massive win in December. I'm not doing anything until I get me in this venue. It's December you're still looking for. I know Dana wants you in MSG. Are you still thinking December in Vegas? December in Vegas sounds good to me. Fucking MSG, New York in November is freezing and the tax is ridiculous, so fuck that. We'll, we'll skip that and we'll go, fight in, uh, we'll go fight in Vegas where it's a little bit warmer. You've obviously got the facilities of the PI, which is just sensational to be able to take advantage of those for a couple of weeks leading up to the fight. It makes sense. But that's what I want. And straight after that, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to call it out. I'm going to be in this venue. I'm going to headline it. And I'm going to bring someone here as a main event, as a challenger, that's gonna excite every single fan of MMA. What's, what's next? What's going on with Wonderboy? He, Dana White says he turned down the fight. I saw Wonderboy released a video on his YouTube channel saying that he's here for the Ian Garys of the world. Yes. But his, he, wants, he seems to want Deuce Man. Do, do you believe the Wonderboy fight happens? Yes. I think, I think if anything, it's a, smart, it's a smart negotiation tactic to say no straight away. But I think the truth of it is, I, I don't, as a fan of MMA, I'm not remotely interested in watching Stephen Wonderboy Thompson fight Usman. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is phenomenal at what he does and he is an amazing striker. And we need someone who's going to go in there and stay on the feet with him. Mm. Go in there and put on a fucking show. Not someone who's going to try to take him down and suffocate what is so beautiful about Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. So as a, 
as a fan of the sport, put them in there with me and let's go have some fun. I know you're you're talking publicly about Ronda Boy, but you have a relationship with him too, yeah. right? Like you're you're essentially kind of friends with him. Uh -huh. um, have you been ta talking with him behind the scenes saying, look, come on, let's make this happen? No, the only thing I did was try to call him. The day I was getting my tattoo and I found out that uh, Michelle Pereira had called out, I tried to call him three times and be like, listen, I'll, fucking I'll get on a plane and fly and fight you tomorrow. But he didn't answer, so. So what do you need to do to make this happen then? Nothing. Fair enough. When you think of Dublin, what, like what goes through your head? What goes through your head when, when you step into this, this arena at some point next year? Just it's going to be ridiculously exciting to achieve a milestone in my career that I said I was going to, that I set out to achieve. To be the guy to bring the Irish back to MMA, the, the UFC back to Irish MMA. And to be that guy that's flying the flag. To inspire a whole generation to get just to get people believing they can do what they want because it's exciting and look i've had some amazing memories in that stadium i was here for the bernard dunn fight mm. and that thing just blew me away coming back in the 11th round and knocking them down three times and just the excitement in that room the energy in that arena that night made me want to do something like that and for me it's going to be reliving that childhood dream of being in that octagon in the three arena or Fucking the O2 and the point back then. Do you know what I mean? So, so I'm just it's making memories. Everything I do is about making memories. Yeah. When I travel the world and I travel, I bring my my team and my family to go see the Christ the Redeemer in Rio. It's about making that memory. So, the journey is part of the process, and you have to enjoy the journey just as much as you do the end goal of becoming a world champion. Mm. And absolutely bringing bringing the UFC back to home soil and fulfilling that dream. It's going to be very special. When you talk about memories, like when it comes to MMA in Ireland, it is, it's 2014. I wasn't there. I wish I was there. I know, so do I. But, you know, the, the massive element of that was the, the collective Irish. Yeah. It, was, it was Connor at the top, but there was a whole swarm. There was Paddy and, mm -hmm. and everyone else. Um, when you envisage this, envisage this card, do you see a swarm of Irish on the card? I think the swarm, of, the swarm that you speak about behind us is well and truly there. They have to keep going out there and competing and doing their thing to get the recognition that they deserve. Like everyone else does, there's, there's nothing given in the sport. You've got to earn it. If you're going out there and putting on performances that warrants you a UFC contract, you're going to get it. Mm. So keep doing your fucking thing. Keep going out there and showing the world how good you are. And I'll do, the, I'll do the hard work. I'll do the heavy lifting and I'll bring them back. You just have to keep doing your job. Do you keep an eye on the other Irish fighters? Like, will you mm -hmm. watch um, Caelan and Reese this weekend in Paris? I, I watch all of them. I think it's important to watch everyone because as, as if, as, look, I've said, I keep, I'm going to keep saying this. I'm a fan of the sport. And to keep track of the Irish MMA is important to me. I watch everyone. I watch all of them, whether it's highlights or I get to watch the fight, depending on what I'm doing. Mm. It's important because I am leading the fucking charge. I am the guy who's doing the heavy lifting. All I'm asking you guys to do is keep winning, and then we'll get you in here too. Absolutely. Look, when it comes to the welterweight division, you have a lot of uh, teammates in there. We've got... <laughs> Uh, a whole host of Kill Cliff uh, uh -huh. fighters. Who are the ones that you want to actively fight? The, in, the, in the top 10? In the top 10. I want to start, look, I want to, I want to get the title as the best striker in the division and that, that comes when I knock out Wonderboy. And that's when that will come. And then after that, I want to start tackling the grapplers and the wrestlers because I want to show the world that I am not just a striker and anyone who's ever trained with me knows that I can do it all. So to fight the Usmans, to fight the Kobe's, to fight whoever they fucking put in front of me that's gonna to wanna to try to take me down and, and get rid of my hands and my feet, I'm excited to show the world what's, what else is there. I'm excited to show the world what else I'm capable of. And trust me when I say, look, I'm telling you now, anybody, you give me Sean Brady as a grappler, I'll sub him. You give me fucking Usman or Kobe, I'll out grapple them or I'll out wrestle them. I don't care what it is, I will find a way to win. It's what I do, I'm a competitor. And above all else, I will get my hand raised. You mentioned Usman there. He obviously does train. I know he's split, but he trains he a little bit in Killcliffe. He fights out of beat with, with fucking Trevor Whitman, and he trains out of the odd time, but he doesn't fucking fight out of there. When you think of Dublin, who's standing across from you? It's tough to say. It's tough to say because the division changes so quickly with a win and a loss. And obviously in the top 10, it's a lot of politics between who's matched, who's not. I'd love to... I, I'd love to bring someone like a Kobe here. I don't know if they'd mm. ever do it, but I think that would be interesting. That would be exciting. I think, I think that'd be huge. Yeah. When it comes to um, the, the welterweight title, right? So yes. it seems like next is probably going to be Leon Edwards versus Kobe. 
Yeah. How do you see that one playing out? Leon absolutely dismantles him. Leon is far too good in every aspect of the sport. Nobody understands just how talented Leon is in the grappling and the wrestling department. I've had the pleasure of training with him, and I'm excited to go back and train with him very soon. He's a phenomenal training partner. He's an amazing person, um, but his skill set is ridiculously good, mm -hmm. and I just do not see how Kobe is able to deal with him. So do you see Wonderboy in November, December, followed by Kobe? I'd like that. That, that, that would sound perfect to me, yeah. When, last question, when does UFC Dublin happen? This, it could be March, obviously the 10 year anniversary of, of 2014 is July. Yep. When do you think it happens? Um, it's definitely got to happen the first four months of next year because I'm not waiting that long to fight again. <laughs> so I want, look, I'm going to fight in, I'm going to fight in December, take a little bit of time off January, February, regroup, figure out where in the hell I'm going to be in the world and then get ready for a fight maybe March, April, May. Sounds pretty good to me. Well, look, <laughs> the future, Ian Machado, Gary, the number 11 ranked UFC welterweight. We're here outside the three arena. I hope that the next time we're speaking here, we'll be ahead of a fight for you there. Andy Stevenson for Swimming, mate. Appreciate the time, Ian. Thank you so much, Cheers. Appreciate you.